Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Orion. I make videos every single Wednesday and Sunday and I post them at 6pm. And for the last five months, we have been living in this Airbnb because our home was deemed unsafe after failing a fire assessment that took place. But after several months and various repairs that have taken place at our building, we are looking at moving back soon and we decided to take it upon ourselves to renovate our home. So in today's video, we take a look back at everything we've accomplished with our bedroom and turning it into a new functional and more comfortable space for us to be in. And whilst this isn't usually the type of content that we post, I hope you'll consider subscribing and following along with our DIY journey. But right, the bedroom is in absolutely no state to begin with any DIY. So I guess there is no time like the present to start shifting things out of this room and in to the other. And I think we're gonna utilize this space right here to store everything. Well, at the very least, I'm going to try my best to because I've got a bed to put there, a calyx unit to put there, and a desk. I, I honestly don't know how I'm gonna fit it all in this room. But as long as it can stay in here whilst we decorate the other room, that'll be completely fine. Because after we have moved everything out of here, I wanna go around the room and fill in all of the holes that have been left from like me putting screws in there for where the TV used to go and where shelves are currently hanging. And then once the holes are filled, I'm gonna then sand them over and paint the entire room white. Because right now we've got like this pinkish cut on the wall and obviously this design that I did for Jess when her desk used to go there. And then there's lots of like polyfiller marks where the contractors came in and did the door frames as well. And basically I wanna give myself a fresh canvas to work with. Because the plan is, is with this divider here, this area of the room is gonna be a different color to this area. However, we're not gonna get bogged down with that today. The objective today is purely to clear the room out and paint it white. Speaking of which, I've only moved the bed. So let's grab the drill and get this calyx unit shifted. Several screws later. I'm most definitely gonna regret that. I am about ready to start moving the calyx unit by myself. Yeah, I'm not sure how well it's gonna go. But at the very least, it'll make for quite a funny moment on YouTube, so. There is, there is that. It's not moving, which is a little concerning. Oh, it would seem I left a bracket in. Right, let's try this one again. I'm gonna move this out this way. Oh, God, if this falls over. Oh dear. We'll not be happy. Right. That should give us enough room to unscrew it. And with that unscrewed, we can attempt this again. I'm really nervous that I don't have the strength to hold this. But, do I have the strength to hold this? Oh, I don't know. Let's go this way. Oh my god, this is very heavy. Let's go down. What? What? Why am I doing this? <laughs> okay. On to. On to next. Ouch, Charlie. Okay. Look at how heavy that was. No joke, it has stuck a dent in my boots. That is where it landed. Let's pop. Pop that back out with a bit of a wiggle of the toes. I should really get some steel toe caps or, you know, wait for some help. Either way, it's now on the floor. Which means it can be pulled or pushed. You know, it's oddly satisfying that everything in here is like the same height. Whether it's up the right way or it's on its side, is all level. I don't know how, but I like it. I also quite like the fact that I didn't break a toe whilst doing that. That was a... Uh, a little bit heavy and maybe I should have waited for some help, but I've done the job now. There is lots of room in this room. All that's left to do is to move Jess's craft things. Again. I, I couldn't tell you how many times I've moved these bloody crafting things. You know what I might actually do? I might move it from there back to there. Because if I put it in the lounge, it's not gonna be the same height and it's just gonna ruin the aesthetic of my stacking. So with one thing at a time, we'll move all of Jess's stuff. Okay, I have moved most of it now into this room. All I've got left to do in here is take the shelves down because I've got a couple of those still in place and decide what I'm gonna do with the desk. I'm currently thinking that I'm just gonna leave it in the middle of the room because I have a big sheet to cover the carpet with to protect that when we start painting and it'd be useful to have like an area to like put the brushes on and stuff like that. So if I get another sheet to cover that with or maybe if I've got some extra bits from there, it'll actually be quite useful. But right, it's time to grab the drill again because we have one, two, three, Four things to unscrew. And with the shelves now done, I'm only just realizing that there's two completely different shelves. I must have bought them at completely different times because one is most definitely a different size than the other. But with everything off the wall, it's just this that's left to do. And the reason I have this in my hand is because uh, it's stuck, like re re really stuck. It's like, it's like chewing gum. I'm hoping I can prise this off the wall, but oh. Hopefully it doesn't break, but oh. 
Oh, that's not making very nice noises at all. Well, it's safe to say that that was never going to fall off the wall because it would have brought the wall down with it. Jesus. Little review for you if you are someone who intends to buy nano leafs at any point in your life. I don't know why you would. Uh, but it was a big gaming thing. And to be honest, they are cool. I like how they go over the walls and stuff like that. But the app isn't great. And the Wi-Fi system in it is really not good either. I've generally speaking not had a very good experience with it. They're cool, but not worth hundreds of pounds. At least not in my opinion. But right, the last thing we need to do now is get the wall plugs out of the wall hoover the floor and put the sheet down. And I'm thinking some of these will be really easy to take out because all I need to do is unscrew them because they are plastered ones. Well, there you go, that, that's one out. And then with these ones, I think I just need to put a screw into them. I don't know if I could, I might be able to hand screw it. Oh, there you go, there you go. Just screw it and pull it out. See, I do know what I'm doing, kind of. A bunch of plugs and screws later. I think I have completely finished this room. All that's left to do is to take this sheet and put it on the floor. So you ready? Well, um, I think I may have bought the wrong size sheet. I get the impression this is for stairs, and if I pick this up, oh, oh dear. See, when I read the packaging, I thought it was seven meter by seven meter, which would have been perfect for this size room. But no, this runway is not really gonna do what I needed to do. It's not gonna cover the floor at all. And no, before you ask, I can't cut it up into stripes and lay it out across the room. That is all we get. I'm also now realizing it because I've removed everything from that room, all of the sound dampening is gone. So the audio has been a bit, Bit rough for like a large portion of this video. I do apologize for that. Obviously, I can't do a lot about it, but I think that's all we can do for now. So we're going to do some magic and click forward to the next day where we are going to be sanding down and filling in the holes. Oh, fuck that. There's too much friction on my fingers. That might be one of the weirdest things I think I've said in the vlogs, but... Well, I've ruined my transition to tomorrow. I'll, I'll see you there. Where well, I believe I'm ready to cork the walls. Now, I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing, but I'm gonna use this corker's acrylic to basically plug the holes. Because as you can see right there, they're quite deep. Then I'm gonna use some poly filler to kind of smooth over the wall. Basically for parts like this. And then I'm gonna use my handy dandy mouse or my hand tool so I can smooth it all out ready for painting. Now I realize that this probably isn't necessary and I could just use the poly filler, but to be honest, I've got it, so I may as well use it. And with the holes filled in, it's just a case of smoothing it out. Be Beautiful. One section done, a couple more to go. I'm now considering, because I've done this part with the gun, that I may as well just dab it over here and smooth this all out with this, rather than opening another poly filler for no reason. Oh yeah, that was easy enough. I have now got everything filled in. And I was about to grab the mouse and have some fun sanding everything down, but I've just been told that Jess wants to have a go first. So I guess I'll have to wait till she gets here. And in the meantime, I'm gonna build a box unit there. Now, I've never actually done this before, so I've had to be a bit nerdy. And using the skills that I do have, I opened up Photoshop, I turned millimeters into pixels, and I redrew basically what I planned to build. That way, when I went to b and I could get everything cut exactly how I needed it to, and I didn't waste any money. So here is some MDF that I got earlier. Now, I wish I could bask in the glory of absolutely nailing the measurements, which I did, but I made one mistake. And you might notice one board happens to be a little bit too long. And to be honest, I'm just gonna blame Benjamin because it was just me and him at B&Q and I think due to the anarchy of it, I just got the last measurement wrong. But it's fine, we can cut that down to size later. But right, before I get cracking on with the MDF, I actually need to build a skeleton first out of timber. And thanks to the nerdy work that I actually did earlier, I can actually go in here and hide layers and you can see there that I need three pieces of timber and if I control and click on one of them, it tells me exactly the measurements I need just there. All I have to do is treat those as millimeters, measure it out, and we'll be good. So 1120 mil around here, and with me square, line it out. Then all we have left to do is to actually cut it. Easy peasy. Time to repeat that a few more times. All right, halfway there, I've got all the vertical pieces of wood cut. And for a little bit of a visual representation, this is kind of how it's gonna go. So I'm gonna have a piece against the wall there, a piece against the wall there, and then a larger piece in the middle to basically connect the two. And then I'll have another three further forward to support the MDF. All I need to do now is cut some lengths this way to basically tie it all together. Several sweaty hours later and a visit from an electrician, we have finally got all of the wood cut and I've got the socket prepared to put another two sockets there. Now it's time to fix the skeleton to the wall. So we're gonna drill some pilot holes in the wood, which we can then use to find out where to put the plugs in the wall. And then we just tap them in. 
Three screws later, we've got our first piece of timber on the wall. Time to repeat that two more times. Actually, I've had a change of heart. I'm gonna put one of the sheets of MDF up first because as much as I trust my measurements, I wanna work from the wall this way because I didn't really compensate for the skirting board when I did my measurements. So if I had some perfectly measured offcuts earlier, I can pin those to the bottom of these legs like so. And then if I've done my job right, it should be level. And the survey says, Oh, I'll take it. Level up top as well. It's not perfect, but this is DIY and I have no idea what I'm doing. So I'm okay with it. Time to make another one for that. All my days, you have no idea how long it takes me to do this thing. And it is mainly because of this. Having to hand saw every piece of wood that goes into that is so long. It is also tremendously exhausting, but we have managed to get the second one up. And thank God, the MDF fits perfectly. And before you say anything, it's intentional. There is meant to be a trough here. And that is because when we put our drinks up here at night, I don't have to worry about them sliding off and falling on our heads whilst we sleep. They're kind of nicely enclosed in their own space. Now, before we put the MDF up, I have to make a confession. And it has something to do with these pieces of wood that are meant to go across there, which you can clearly see don't fit. And it's because instead of cutting this timber here to cover to go into the skirting board, because I can't take the skirting boards off, it, it means that these all these pieces of offcuts that I've cut today are now too they're, they're too long by literally the length of the skirting board. Honestly, incorporating the skirting board into this whole thing has made this a complete nightmare. And I really wish I'd just taken it off, like, and just, who's gonna know, really? No one's gonna come in and see it, but pff, play by the rules and all that. So in order for this to match perfectly, I need to cut the skirting board out of that little corner there. And to be honest, I am genuinely so sick of using a handsaw that I think I might use a jigsaw for this. And thankfully, that is something I have from years and years ago. So with the skirting board marked out, let's get to sawing. Honestly, praise be to electric tools, it fits perfectly. And for that reason, I'm just gonna tack it in. And now that I know that that's not gonna move, I can fit the second board perfectly in line. The skeleton is fixed to the wall. The MDF fits flush there, and it fits flush there. All my days, he's only gone and done it. That has legitimately taken me all the live long day. And <laughs> I have finished it. That piece of MDF right there should fit on the end Perfectly. And if it doesn't, it can piss off. All oh my days, would you look at that. I just need to cut the skirting board again. And it is mission accomplished. Now, before we do the final touches on this, I do kind of feel like I've not explained what this is for. And basically, when we put the bed here and create like the snug, there is nowhere for us to put drinks, our phones, all that kind of fun stuff. So I thought I would basically DIY a headboard with at the top is an area for us to stick our drinks and phones. And then just above the headboard, we're gonna put some sockets in. So I can have a socket just there, Jess can have a socket just there, and everything is fine and dandy. I realize that right now it does look heavily DIY day if you don't know what you're doing, but trust me, when it's finished, it will look good. We just have to trust the process. Right, now as you saw earlier, I mentioned that these bits of wood were now too long. So as much as it pains me, I need to trim them down a smidge. Then I can put them in place. One, two, three. Job is a good one. We just need to mark out where we're gonna put the sockets and then repeat the process on the left. And now we know where our sockets are gonna go on the wall. We can take our saw and cut them out. That is one hole done. And then the box should fit snug in there. Like that. But before we leave that there, I want to secure it into the wall. So with a little bit of timber, I'm going to place that behind the wall and screw it in place. Like so. And then we can put the box in like that and screw it straight into the timber. And then we know it ain't going nowhere. Now to repeat the process for this section. All right, now that we have the two sockets in the wall, we need to cut a couple of chases in the wall to run the cables. And then when we got the chase in, we're going to use this PVC to run the cable through. And then finish it off with some poly filler to smooth it all out. So with the jobs in mind, I think it's time for a bit of a time lapse.
like many, many hours later, we have sockets on the wall and I've got them filled. Now, by no means is this done perfectly. Originally, I did want PVC in the wall, but I couldn't find a way to stick it in. And then when I went out to home base to try and get some tacks to tack it into place, I, I couldn't find anything. So in the end, I ended up just using some twin and earth cable clips to clip it into the wall and then plastered over the top. All I need to do now is wait for this to set, go over it again with some more filler. And then using the DeWalt mouse, I can smooth it down. Meanwhile, Jess and Brittany have been working on sanding this, these walls down, getting them ready to paint. So the holes we filled in earlier are nice and smooth and ready for primer. the box unit, I need to stick the MDF back on so it's ready to be polyfilled. But just to address something, obviously these cables are hanging out the wall and normally I wouldn't, I'd like to chase them all the way down to the skirt, take the skirt off and hide it behind the wall. I can't really do that. So I've kind of popped these out here and obviously it's gonna be hidden behind the MDF. So you won't see it anyway. Uh, there'll be no cables visible on the show. And then when we come to take it apart, obviously we can see where the cables go. I know it's proper DIY Dave, but it is what it is. All right, before I put the MDF boards back on there, the top board needs to be cut down to size so I can put two there. So I've got the jigsaw out, I'm gonna cut them down to size. All right, I've got my two boards cut to size. I now just need to put the front on. And a few screws later, we have got the MDF board on. The top is in and it's basically good to go. All I really need to do now is wait for the polyfiller to dry and then actually polyfill this and sand it all down. So I think we'll paint this wall last. But Matt, it has to be said, I'm actually quite proud of the fact that I've managed to learn how to insert two new sockets into the wall and spur off an old radial circuit as well. I actually got all the equipment and did it properly. I didn't mess around and like do some kind of boss job but otherwise sticking out the wall, but we won't talk about that. Otherwise, I actually think it turned out okay. Once that is all filled, sanded and painted, I reckon it'll look great. Speaking of which, we've only made our way halfway around the room with the paint. And this is the only bit that is left to paint. Now, I think we could probably go all the way up to the end of the wall there and just leave this till last. But we are getting to a point where things are running out of batteries so we can't sand this down. So I think I'm gonna have to use the hand sander and just give it a good old bit of elbow grease. That is much better. So let's jump back into a time lapse. eyes are deceiving me but I have a feeling that we've got the wrong paint because this is now the second coat that I've put on here and I swear it only takes a couple of coats of primer. The one thing that I have noticed about this particular paint is it dries very very quickly and I wonder if that's because of how thin it is but it's just not covering the walls the way I want it to. And it still takes a couple of hours for it to actually dry. So I'm kind of getting to that point now where I'm stumped because the paint's not really covering the wall I'd like how I'd like it to. It takes a bit too long for it to dry, which means that we have to kind of sit around and wait before we can carry on painting again. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if I can carry on painting another coat on a wet coat. I feel like it has to dry a little bit first. So I'm thinking now is because, you know, it, the sun is starting to go down, we're running out of daylight. Uh, and these lights in the ceiling aren't great. I have to keep moving them. It's, it's very annoying and you can't really see what you're doing. So it's a bit hard for me to film. I'm thinking we leave it for now, come back tomorrow morning, see how covered the wall is. And if it's okay, then we'll carry on using the paint. And if not, then I'll nip out and I'll get some proper thick, like, like Dulux paint. Because the paint that I got is this Leyland Walls and Ceilings Matte White Emulsion paint. Because when I went to B&Q, there was like loads of stuff and she was like, take this one. And she basically put it in my hands. I was like, okay, I'll just trust her because she works here. But I'm beginning to wish I'd got the Dulux stuff. Either way, let's jump through to tomorrow. All the paint would have dried. My polyfiller would have dried as well, so we can get that covered again. And then hopefully we can look at finishing this wall. So I'll see you there. Alrighty, looks like that has dried and this is not the right paint. I've done some research and discovered that I have indeed used the wrong paint on this wall. That's what I get for listening to the staff. I honestly, I went to go and buy Dulux and she's like, oh, this will save you money. It's much more affordable. It dries faster. I was like, okay then. 
It is what it is. So today we're going to get the Dulux paint and do another couple of coats on here. Obviously, I won't time lapse that because I have since discovered that this light flickers on the time lapse. I'm really sorry about that. But as of my watch right now, it is currently 8.27, which means the shops aren't open yet. So in the meantime, I have come back early to dismantle this and clean up my work behind. A few screws later, we've got the MDF off. I'm going to basically trail this along here and then run it into the timber. And then using some cable clips, I'm going to pin it to this timber here and then basically snug it down there. A couple of clips later, it looks much neater. Hindsight tells me that maybe I should have trailed all the way down to just the top of the skirting board and then run it across the top there. Maybe that would have been better, but I don't know. This is my first time doing it. In my mind, because it's going to be behind this MDF board and nothing is going to be screwed into it, it doesn't really matter that the cable's there. You can't see it. I thought that'd be fine. Maybe it's not, I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below. Either way, it's all clipped up and secured to the wall. Next up, we're going to give it a quick sand down so I can put another layer of polyfill over it. All right, time for some more filler. Okay, jobs are good. In. All I need to do now is wait for that to dry so I can sand it on again. It'll be all smooth. And then when I paint over it, you won't have any idea that I've filled it like crazy. But right, I have got the MDF board back on and it is about time to go get the paint. And hopefully this one does the job. It says that it is extra thick and it's easy to apply and it only needs one coat to simply refresh the walls, which is exactly what we need to do. So as we've had a million time lapses today, this is what the wall looks like before. And after one coat, this is what it looks like now. So I think it's actually done a really good job over here, but as you can see down there, there is still a little bit of the paint from before. However, for the rest of the room, it is completely white and looking fresh now. Unfortunately, this stuff hasn't dried yet, so we can't paint this wall right now. And I can't do another coat on this area because again, it's not dry. So we're gonna have to wait a little bit before we can finish it off. And thanks to a big old fan that I bought many, many years ago, it is now dry. Which means I can get to sanding this down and we could put a second coat over here. Which, after doing so, I don't think we're going to get rid of the white lines. I don't even know if you can see it on the camera, but yeah, there are kind of white stripes on this. Not too bothered about it, but this is all sanded down now and ready to be painted. I've actually put the top board on as well and sealed it all. But otherwise, I think it's good to paint. So this is the before, a middle after one coat. And this is what it looks like like with two coats. Now, as you can see, the lines are still kind of visible. So I'm thinking we're gonna put one more coat on it. However, this wall here has had three coats on it now and you can still see the lines. On camera, you can't see them too much, but when you get up and close, uh, in person, you can really see the lines. So I think we're gonna put one more coat on that back wall there and then just leave it as it is. We're not gonna get too stressed and burned down by it. Because ultimately, one of the main reasons you can see the lines on this wall is because the light hits it. And when we build the calyx unit back in place and stuff like that, it'll be a snug and you won't really notice it too much. The goal of that side of the room is to be a bit more cozy and dark. So you're not gonna really notice the lines on the wall, especially when we do the next coat of paint on it. But the main goal of today is to get some final touches added to the snug. Because in this quadrant, of the room here the bed is going to go and i want panels that run across here so i've got some mdf sliced up let's see if i've got enough to fill this area all the way around oh dear this is not looking promising so as you can see this is what i'm kind of going for panels to go all the way across but i actually want there to be a panel at the top here to frame it off and i only have two panels left which is not enough now i could save some by making the gaps a little bit bigger but to be honest i like it like that i'm not going to put panels at the bottom because the bed's going to be there and you're not going to see it so what's the point however i am short panels so i think we should nip out and see if we can source some extra panels that match the ones that i've got so far i need to go out anyway because i need to get some paint that just wants because once i've glued all of these panels to the wall and got them how i want them to this half of the room is going to be painted green it looks like this and uh, that's what jess is after so fingers crossed we can get everything we need. So the first place we're going to try is home base. I am really hoping they have what I need so I don't have to drive all the way to B&Q to get it. Well, I found the paint that I was looking for and it looks like they just have one in stock. I'm really hoping that this is the stuff that Jess wanted. Next up, we need to find a pack that matches what we've already got. This is looking promising. It's only a three mil difference, but I'm going to be trimming them down anyway. Well, that's a great success. I'd have to drive around in this miserable weather trying to find what I need. We can go back to the flat and carry on. That is assuming that the panels that I bought match the one Oh, oh, it's off by a little bit. Oh dear. The ones that I've got are a smidge bit bigger. But I don't think it's going to matter because I'm going to use those ones to trim the top so you won't notice. The colour of the board is also a little bit different, but I don't think that's going to matter either because I'm going to paint them anyway. And I don't think I need to prime them, so I should just have to go straight over with this. At least that is the hope. But for now, let's get them all trimmed up and to size. With this thing, 
for the first time. Now I ordered this and I put it all together myself following like the instructions, but that's the most worrying part is that I've used one of these before, but I've never had to put it together. And it arrived like this with all the parts over the place. And I am very aware of how dangerous this thing is. So yeah, needless to say, I'm a little bit nervous about that. So I think we'll do something a little bit more soothing first and fix those cracks. Because there's absolutely nothing dangerous, about this and all my days that is looking better already i just need to cork the edges now beautiful job done now what we have to do is wait for this to dry off so i can sand it down and i guess there is no avoiding but cutting these things down with that i put myself a little bit of timber on there just to do like a test run hopefully this is fine all right i have absolutely no reason to believe that there should be anything wrong with this fingers crossed <laughs> A tree. This would have been so useful when I built the frame for that headboard. You have no idea how many offcuts I did. Using this thing, it took me all day. But right, now that I know I'm not going to hurt myself once I cut all of this MDF down, let's get everything measured up. I want to nail this first time. So with some handy clamps, I know that my first measurement needs to be 112 centimeters for five panels sitting vertically on the headboard. And on my days, I had no idea that it did this. But if I flick a switch, there's a laser in it. Could have me impressed. Alrighty, I have five boards clamped there. I have it clamped there. It's all measured up. Here's the nailing this first time. Okay, I did nail it first time. Let's take two. Yeah, it, it, it turned out that my clamp was in the way. Nailed it. And now if I've done all my measurements correctly, the panel should fit perfectly on my headboard. And would you look at that? Perfect. However, before I get carried away using the saw and cutting all the rest of the panels, I need to make sure I get my spacing right. That way I know exactly how many panels I need to use across here and how many I need to use at the top. So using my handy clamp again, and so that mind boggling math, I have worked out the exact spacing I need. Honestly, for a minute there, my head hurt. But now we've got our measurements, let's cut everything down. Oh boy. I love this thing. Where was you earlier? Anyways, I've got all of my MDF cut up and to size, and I've even got some offcuts to help with the spacing. I guess there's nothing left to do but to no nails this thing to the wall, and fingers crossed this goes as smoothly as I think it will. I've got me no more nails, I've got my tripod. Let's jump into a time lapse. days you know what i think i've actually nailed it now obviously it's not perfect because i've cut corners a little bit but as it's me living here i don't think there's actually any issue with that the corners i cut is realistically i should have put a skirt in across the front of this headboard and then it would have gone flush all the way through then it would look really clean however once it's all painted and the bed is there you genuinely won't notice i feel like this has been my saying throughout this entire process and that is to trust the process. When we get there, it will look good, he says. Now all that's left to do really is to uh, kind of fill in the gaps here and then sand it all down so it's all smoothed over. Uh, like here, you can see there's quite a big gap there as you see the dark marks. Uh, and then we should be good to go. Now you might be wondering why it kind of just goes over and hangs over here a little bit. And that is because if I've done my measurements correctly, this is where the calyx unit will go. So that will kind of tuck in behind the calyx unit and it will look like it stops there. Uh, I could bead it off and put one at the end, but it, it kind of looks weird. Maybe I should have like gone there and then worked out this way and then it would have all been even, but then it wouldn't have matched that there. So it's kind of what it is. A lot of these things are going to be hidden behind other like units, you know, like the calyx unit or the bed. So I genuinely don't think it's that big of a deal. Now, according to my no more nails, it says I've got about five minutes to do any adjustments, which I've done, uh, but then it says it will support 50 kg after 12 hours and fully dry after 24 to 4. 48. So what I'm thinking is I have some lunch and let it dry out for a little bit, like an hour or so. And then I go around and fill it all in, ready to be sanded. And then we come back a couple days later, sand it all down and paint it. Lots of corking later, I have filled all of the panels. And a little bit of research over lunchtime tells me that I probably should prime these. So what I'm gonna do is leave it for now, let it all dry so I can come back in a few days sand it down and prime it. Because even though I did that this morning, I don't think it's dry yet. So I'm gonna leave it for now. Definitely better to be patient. I'll see you when it's dry. This might seem like really random for me to throw in a vlog, but 
it's been a few days and I was just thinking to myself today, I was like, I actually feel so grateful that I get to come and do this. I was like, I woke up this morning feeling super excited to come around and carry on doing the DIY because I genuinely do really love it. And I just want to say I'm really thankful that you guys tune in and show so much support because the vlogs have been killing it recently and you guys keep like reaffirming me that you do really enjoy these like these DIY videos. So thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. If you are enjoying them, please do leave them a thumbs up rain. And if you are new to my channel, then hit subscribe. But right, it's dry, so let's carry on. It is nice and dry actually. This stuff is proper solid now. I can sand all of this down, get it smoothed out and cleaned, uh, get ready to basically put primer on it. So as this could take a while, I've got my GoPro out and we're gonna time lapse it. That is a job done. Everything is sanded down and primed and ready to be green. I'm still really hoping that this is the green that Jess wants. But as I now need to wait for this to dry, I might as well ask her herself when she gets here. Hello, dear. Did I buy the right paint? Yeah, I So the plan is Jess is going to use this to paint that. And while she runs the time lapse painting all of this, I am sorting the lights out. Because as you may notice, I've put a junction box here and I've created a new hole over here because I'm going to bring the light across here so it's centre in this area of the room. It'll make sense for later, but for now, let's get on with the time lapse. about an hour and a half later it is finally green and if i take a step back i think it's actually looking really good it is patchy in spots i think it might need another coat as you can see here it's obviously not dry yet it takes a couple of hours to dry out but what do you think do you like it yeah is mommy done a good job yeah. Meanwhile, I've been an electrician and I've extended the light socket to the other side of the room. Because for those people who haven't seen previous videos, there will be a divider in the middle of the room. That's why the paint stops here. And this will almost be like an office area and this will be the bedroom area. And it just so happens where the divider is, the socket was kind of blocking the room. So I've plugged it for now. It needs a, a little bit more like filler on it because the plasterboard that I used to fill the hole is a little bit thinner than what the actual depth of it was originally. Uh, so it needs another coat on it, which will be fine. But I've filled up this one perfectly fine. Electrics all work. If I flick this switch, the light comes on. All that's really left to do with this now is to get the light panel from B&Q and see if I can fit that to this. I've also been chaining together some boxes that I'm going to be using for Jess's desk. But we're not going to be fitting those today. I think for now, we're pretty much good. We need to wait for this to dry so we can add another coat to it, which we'll do off camera. And then the room basically just needs to clean down, emptying out and start moving all the furniture back in. But before we can move all of this, I need to sand down that and put another coat of polyfiller on it. So with my door mouse, this is going to get very dusty. <laughs> And you know what? I reckon that the DeWalt handled that really well. It does actually suck up the dust and then goes into that bag there, but sometimes it can get very dusty. All right, now we've sanded that one, we just need to do this one. Okay, next up on the agenda is probably to finish this bedroom area. Now you can see this wood piece here. A part of me really wants to add a wooden trim that goes along the top here, because I think it would look really nice. So I'm kind of looking now with a bit of scrap wood that I've got. <laughs> if we should do that, and I, I think we should. So we're gonna have to nip to B&Q later today. But I think the only thing that needs to be done on this area is actually clipping that to the wall. And I believe in my good home electrical bag, this has now become, at the bottom of here, there are some clips. Some digging around and, oh, yeah, they'll do. So bish, bash, bosh, that's a job. Well done. Now I think it's time to clean up my workspace and get ready for this room to be clean. So a bit of magic. This room is looking much better. Right, I think we're about ready to go to B&Q, but before I leave, I'm just gonna fix this socket really quick so that when I get back, I'm ready to fit that. But can someone tell me what this, like, it's like Play-Doh, which completely fills this back box? I didn't do this. This was like this already. Can someone tell me in the comments what, what this is? I'd really appreciate it because it's in a lot of the sockets, but that's that done. Got a junction box in there ready to connect that to. All right, let's head off to B&Q. Well, hopefully we can find everything we need. First thing we need to do is pick some lights and I am considering these light panels, but Jess also likes the option of being able to move them and point them at different areas of the room. This is remade. She's gone for these ones. Now we need some balls because it doesn't come with those. I was going to get some LED strips today to put in like the headboard and around the trim. 
Uh, but I think I'm going to go for some Govi ones and they don't do those here, so I'm going to order those online. What they do have, which we do need, is some blinds. Now we need to go look at some wood. And this is exactly what we're looking for. It's got built-in grooves into it, so it just sits on top. And it'll look like that. All right, we've got most of the things we need. I just want to look at some wood because uh, on Jess's side of the room, she needs a place, like... Like almost like a shelf to put her like cricket and the other like printing stuff. So near the window, I'm thinking of building a shelf that goes along there that she can actually put the stuff on. And this wood is really nice. However, we're unsure whether to get it right now because Jess's cricket basically has paper that goes in one side and it comes out the other end. And we don't really know what the max depth of that is. So I'm not entirely sure if it's going to work if we do put it on a shelf like that. So we need to do some brainstorming, figure out how much exactly she needs because we might have to put like a tray on it that pulls out so she can use it. All right, with some no more nails acquired, I think it's time to get out of here. So we can use it to put the trim on. And I think that looks proper good. I just need to trim it down to size. And then we need to bring back an old friend to cut a 45 degree angle in it. All right, with the wood cut, let's stick it to the wall. So we're going to run some no nails down there. What, this is, what is this? Jesus Christ. Well, a bit of teamwork later, we have it fitted. And you know what? I think it was the final touch it needed. I will confess, I did make a little mistake. I cut this side a little too short, so I can't really add a trim here because it, it doesn't work. Mistakes were made. This is our DIY workaround. I've trimmed up a little bit of wood there, but you know, with cover up, you, you can't tell. Anyways, as things are starting to look a little bit more homely in here, let's bring the Calyx unit in. And this time, I've got help. So hopefully it shouldn't be as difficult as it was before. Ready? One, two, three. A little bit higher, that's it. All right, now we have it in place. We're contemplating on whether we should paint it green so it matches the rest of the snug. Because I'm wondering if it should continue all the way around onto here. But I don't, I don't know. Obviously, this is actually painted with the wrong paint anyway, so we're gonna go over it with another coat of white, so it'll all be a clean coat of white. But in order to do that, we need to fit those back in. A couple of screws layer, the panels are back on, and I am really torn about what to do with this. A part of me is like, I should continue this all the way across. And I'm a little bit annoyed at myself because my whole motto for this was, if you're gonna do something, do it right. And this looks so good. And this just looks crap, like. <sighs> God damn it. I guess I'm gonna have to do it properly. So we've come back to B&Q. We need more panels. We need some more trim, a couple of pine shelves, and some wood filler. Time to head back home, where it's time to crack on and get shit done. So I've polyfilled everything. Whilst we wait for it to dry, I'm gonna be fitting the light. So I need to screw that to the ceiling up there. Unfortunately, I know which way the wires run, so I'm gonna run the plate this way. Then we're gonna stick some plaster plugs in there and then simply screw the bracket into the ceiling. A lot of fiddling later, it is fixed to the ceiling. Now it just needs some light bulbs. And then for the moment of truth. Have I done my electrics right? Oh, look at that. It came on in sequence, which is a bit weird. Well, it turns out it was a first time thing. They all come on at the same time now. Looking good. All right, now it's time to do the sockets. And I'm basically gonna screw them to that piece of wood there and then put the wood on the wall. A bit of electrical layer. We're done. Time to finally have some power back in this place. I've done it all right because it's charging me battery. Fortunately, this is still wet. So what I'm gonna do now is get all those panels ready and prep those. So I need four vertical panels at 42 inches and then they should go perfectly level. Oh, look at that, I've nailed it. And then for the horizontal panel, I need to stick one to the end. So I need to make a cut there. Honestly, I feel like we're getting deja vu. We've done it that many times. <laughs> but it never gets old. And you know what? Because we're gonna be painting it all white, I think even though the filler is a little bit wet, I reckon I can actually stick these on now. Then I can just sand around it. So thankfully, my tripod's still out. Let's run a time lapse. Ta-da, we have got it done. I have also added some filler onto it. All we can do now really is wait for everything to dry. So this is what it looks like currently. This is what it looks like with a coat of primer on it. This is what it looks like with a coat of green on it. And then finally with the wooden trim. All right, now we're waiting for that to dry. I think we should fit this. Right, well, I'm thinking this should be easy to put together, but... Oh. You never know with instructions like that. All right, I think I've got it. I need one of those on the left, one of those on the right, that in the middle, and I just need to measure it off. All right, fortunately, it comes with this face plate that I can just place up here and kind of get a good idea of where I want this thing to go. So if we line that up, use the old level, then we can mark it up 
where we want it to go. And now we have it marked up there. We just need to place these on and screw them in. So I've got my drill holes marked. I've got my holes plugged. And now that I've got one loosely in, I'm going to hold this up in place to make sure I've got my measurements right. And oh, it's a good job I checked because as you can tell by my noughts and crosses, I was off by a smidge. Well, you know what? We've only gone and nailed it. Or I guess in this case, we've screwed it. But there we have it. Some blinds are installed. It's time to feel very white in this side of the room. Oh, there's, there's some pink here. But on the other side of the room, oh, it's looking looking good it is looking dry and i think with it all in place i'm ready to install the tv and some shelves so we've got ourselves a new tv wall mount because this one keeps it really snug to the surface and with another set of instructions it should be really easy to install so last time i had a spine that went down the middle and we screwed straight into the center of it however this time i'm not doing that because i have a different bracket so what i'm thinking is, is we anchor it in this side with timber and hopefully that should support it very well at least that's what i think it should be okay. So the best way to do this is to line it up on this side like so. Then we're going to drill a pilot hole. And using my clamps to hold it all into place, we can drill through on the other side into the timber. And then in theory, with these chunky screws, she'll be able to screw straight through to the other side. Put that loosely in place there. And then with a the second chunky screw, it should be perfectly level and secure. A few screws later, it's time to hang the TV. All right, this is probably going to be one of those moments before disaster, but hopefully, I should have done everything okay. I'm trusting in my uh, in my design. Okay, oh, it's, it's on. The TV is on the wall. Well, it definitely couldn't get any closer if I wanted it to, because it is it's quite literally touching the uh, the wooden trim there. But look at that. That is a mission successful. And I actually had it tilted forward a little bit, so that's why it was touching. But look at that. That looks really good. And seriously, that is genuinely not going to go anywhere. It is properly stuck in there. And you might have noticed whilst I've been doing this that I do actually have cables set up here. I have an extension lead that goes down there, outside there, comes down here and behind Jess's desk. And in this box here, I have some of these, which even came with a hole saw, but they are just there to make the hole look a little bit cleaner. So what we're gonna do now is stick a hole in there like so, so we can feed a cable to the TV and hide them all up there. Fingers crossed, this goes to plan. This should fit perfectly in there. And now I can take all my cables and feed them through the hole. Oh my God, this is coming together so well. I've got the wires plugged into the back of the TV and I can hide all the electronics of the TV on our top shelf out of Jess's way. All right, next up is to stick those onto there. That's one shelf, two shelf, and I think we're probably ready to bring the bed back in. But before we clear this area ready for the bed, I actually want to stick a hole in there. And that is because I plan on using some LEDs to light up the shelf in here. And it comes with all of this wiring that I want to hide down there. Oh boy, it's coming together. Got some lights fitted in. Look how good that is. Got the LEDs back there and hidden the cables down the holes. I think we're ready to clean all of this mess up and bring the bed in. And I should probably clean Jess's desk away from being a workbench. But right, are you ready to see the final product? Because I genuinely... I can't hold my excitement. I cannot believe that I have built this all by myself. Brace yourselves. Because when we open this door, look at this. Oh my God, it actually came together so well. I've got the LEDs in the headboard. And oh, dude, what on earth? I had a picture in my brain and to see it finally visualized in front of me is just bonkers i have to go ultra wide but look at this oh oh my days dude if i was allowed i would have definitely put the false wall in here so it all like seamlessly connected but you know what the fact that i can take that away to the next place wherever we move in the future is is, is, a, is a godsend i can't i can't even english i can't i can't mate i'm shaking i can't hold my camera straight i have grafted at this for what feels like forever i've just been doing this one room for so long and now that I see it in front of me, I am so glad that I made the decision that if you're going to do something, do it right. Because man, like, don't get me wrong. This is how I've decorated it. I need Jess to come around and furnish it her way and put like a woman's touch on it. Because right now, this is just how I've done it. And I have, I don't really have much idea what I'm doing. We actually have different bedding as well. If I open up this drawer here, we've also got like this darker green bedding, which we could use to put on here. And then I've got another throw coming, which is like a darker green throw here. So... Right now, it seemed right for it because all the walls are green to have like a white, you know, bed sheet. But guys, what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. And please, if you did enjoy this and you are as gas as I am for how sick this looks, then please leave a thumbs up rain. And if you are new to my channel, hit subscribe. There will be absolutely more of this cowboy here 
getting up to this nonsense. But whilst I am really excited about this and how sick this looks, I haven't quite got round to um, cleaning up Jess's side of the room. But I think we'll tidy this up next time when Jess is back and we can showcase her turning this entire area into like a complete crafting space. But for the final time, I'm going to marvel at the snug that I have built. I can't wait to stick some stuff on the walls here and here. It, oh my dude, it looks so good. But I am going to leave you and just say thank you so much for watching. I genuinely do appreciate it. It's been so nice to do this. Like I do love doing DIY stuff, but I like being able to share it as well. And like, and to see the comments and the feedback that I get from actual people that do this kind of stuff for a living and gassing me up is, is so, so nice. I really do appreciate it. So thank you so much for watching. My name is Orion and I'll just catch you guys next time. Peace, peace, much love. Bye-bye.